The first dystopian science fiction story to ever be told in cinema was Fritz Lang's 1927 film, Metropolis. A highly futuristic epic set in a city divided into two parts. The cultured and wealthy upper section depicted with titanic splendor and the bleak underworld that resembled a Jacob Rees photograph. This setting is social stratification taken to the extreme. Social stratification meaning a system by which society ranks categories of people in a hierarchy. The specific system detailed in Metropolis being that of the class, which stratifies society into cohesive oppositional groups based on economics. The two groups inhabiting the titular metropolis of Fritz Lang's future parallels Karl Marx's ideas of the two antagonistic classes of a capitalistic society, the working proletariat and the exploitative bourgeoisie. The rich enjoy a decadent and relaxing experience, while the struggling poor are subject to the logical end of capitalism, where humans are treated like the machines they work. Metropolis was the first science fiction film to use stratification and wealth disparity as a source of conflict, but it certainly wasn't the last. In fact, it has become a staple of the dystopian genre in the years following. Blade Runner's imagining of the futuristic Los Angeles depicts the massive difference between the dirty, claustrophobic streets and the clean grandeur of the Tyrell organization. Children of Men briefly explores the contrast between the violent and depressing decay of a general populace with the forced normality of a wealthy class. District 9 details a caste system that stratifies based on race, an allegory for the South African apartheid. Gattaca, Mad Max Fury Road, Elysium, The Hunger Games, all of these dystopian futures are based on stratification and an extreme wealth disparity. It really shows you just how terrified our society is of this trend. Understanding social stratification is helpful in analyzing cinema, but cinema is also helpful in unpacking how stratification affects our world. In 2014's Snowpiercer, an apocalyptic winter has made Earth uninhabitable. The only survivors exist on the Rattling Ark, a train that perpetually circles the world and is the last society on Earth. The passengers are split up into three distinct classes that mirror the ones in our society. The rich exist nearest to the locomotive, and the life-giving essence of the sacred engine. The desolate poor are all the way in the tail section with the middle class separating the two. We explore the train starting from the back and progressing to the front. Along the way, we see how the classes in our own society interact, but in caricature. The poor exist in dirt and scarcity, treated like criminals and impeded by institutional barriers. The middle class is colorful, calm, and comfortable. They are fed and recite propaganda that justifies the underclass's poverty and the righteousness of the capitalistic conductor of the train, Wilford. The rich are hedonistic, too self-involved to pay any attention to the classes underneath them. The only windows that exist on the train are in the center section. This might be in reference to the fact that sociologists like Dalton Connolly believe that the middle class is the only one that thinks about the future. The wealthy don't need to express concern, and the poor are living day to day too worried about survival to look ahead. The ending, and I do apologize for spoilers, reveals that the entire struggle between the lower and middle class was orchestrated by the prophetic conductor. The enlightened thinker Thomas Mathis put forth the argument that inequality was positive and necessary, as an equal society living with finite resources will inevitably lead to everyone living in a state of constant near-death misery due to the exponential growth of populations. Obviously, Wilford subscribes to this notion, as his plan was to spark struggle between the population. The allegories in Snowpiercer are heavy-handed. 
but they do help us understand the separation that exists in America. Just as the ones in Metropolis warn of the consequences if that separation grows too large. The futuristic dystopia of Fritz Lang's capitalistic nightmare was set in the once far off year of 2000. The same year that the ratio of a US CEO pay to that of an average worker was over 375 to 1. So maybe Metropolis wasn't so much science fiction as it was prediction. And maybe that separation is too large already. Yes, please.